Domain 3, The Ancient Greek Civilization, Lesson 8. What contributions have the ancient Greeks made to modern civilizations? Remember, some things we have heard. The Olympics, art, such as Pindar's poems and Myron's statue, the discus thrower. Architecture, that style of Parthenon influenced many U.S. government buildings today, including the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And democracy. Athens was the birthplace of democracy, the type of government we had in the U.S. You are going to hear about another ancient Greek contribution in today's Read Aloud. You are also going to hear about another large civilization that existed in the time of the ancient Greeks. These people were called Persians, and they were ruled by a king named King Darius. This is the Persian Empire right here. This empire was very large and powerful and had conquered many areas near where the ancient Greeks lived. What happened when the powerful Persians invaded ancient Greek? Listen to find out if your predictions are correct and to learn more about another ancient Greek contribution. The Persians are coming! The terrifying news raced through Athens like a rapidly spreading fire. The very name of the Persians meant terror to all Greeks. Why do you think the Greeks were so afraid of the Persians? And now King Darius had sent an army of Persian foot soldiers and cavalry, or soldiers who rode horseback, to punish the Athenians. Darius was angry that Athens had helped other Greek city-states fight against Persia. A fleet of 600 ships had brought as many as 20,000 experienced Persian soldiers to a beach about 26 miles from Athens near a wide flat plain called Marathon. Marathon is located right here. It's 26 miles to Athens. There are not enough of us to face them, moaned an Athenian army general. Besides, no one can beat Persian soldiers. But another Athenian general, a man named Miltides, answered, The Persians fight for a king most of them have never seen, and who care nothing for them. We fight for our freedom and for the freedom of our children. That must be worth something in battle. Remember, the Athenians came up with the idea for democratic rule. Now in those days, the Athenians had ten elected generals, plus another military leader called a pole march. Callimachus, the pole march, gathered along with the ten generals, including Miletides, to create a plan of defense. One of the generals said, The plain of Marathon is a perfect place for the Persians to attack us. There is room for their horsemen to move around us, and there will be nowhere for us to go to avoid or keep away from their well-organized soldiers fighting on foot. Another general suggested, Let us send our fastest runner to Sparta. The Spartans are the greatest fighters in Greece. If they will help us, we might have a chance. But it was 155 miles from Athens to Sparta, and some of the journey included rugged mountains and streams. The generals knew that they would need a runner who was fast and strong. Pheidippides is our man, the generals agreed. No one in Athens can touch him for speed over long distance. So they sent swift-footed Pheidippides to call on the Spartans for help. Then the generals called together all 10,000 Athenian men of fighting age. In every Athenian home there were tearful goodbyes. At last the Athenians started off toward the plain of Marathon, about 26 miles away. Meanwhile, the Persians were camped on the beach near the edge of the plain. The Persian commander in charge told his men, we will win such a great victory here for King Darius that the rest of the Greeks will simply surrender to us. The Persians were so confident their commander took no special steps to guard his camp other than sending the cavalry off on their horses to search the area a few times a day. Why was the Persian army so confident that they would win the fight? As all this was happening, the strong legs and powerful heart of the Athenian messenger Pheidippides carried him towards Sparta. Pheidippides ran as he had never run before, stopping only a few times to drink from streams or rivers. 
He ran for almost three days until he reached Sparta and the two Spartan kings. You must come with your armies at once or it will be too late, he explained. Can you imagine running for three days? To his horror, the Spartan kings answered, We cannot leave before tomorrow. Sparta is in the middle of a religious holiday honoring the gods, and our law says we must finish before we can leave to fight. The Spartans were celebrating a nine-day festival called Carnea to honor Apollo as the protector of their cattle. By then the battle will be over and we will have lost, Phidippides exclaimed. He set out again to carry the news to the Athenians that they would be on their own. As it turned out, this was not true. As the Athenians marched towards Marathon, a thousand Greeks from another city, having heard the news, joined them. Together, the 11,000 Greeks marched over the mountains to the plain of Marathon. As they did so, ooh, Phidippides arrived to say, The Spartans cannot help us. The generals were horrified. The Persian army is so much bigger than ours, with many more soldiers, one pointed out fearfully. We should surrender and beg for mercy, cried a second. Mercy is an act of compassion or kindness. There will be no mercy, said Miletides, the general who had spoken boldly back in Athens. The Persians are here because we helped other Greeks strike back against them. The Persians will not stop until they have destroyed us. Will the Athenians surrender to the Persians or fight for freedom? The ten generals voted. Should they surrender or should they attack? Each side won five votes. Then Miletides remembered something. Callimachus was allowed to vote too. Miletides told him, The decision rests with you. You will decide whether we surrender and agree to serve the Persians, suffering all that this will bring or whether we will fight and live as free people. How do you think Callimachus will vote to break the tie? Callimachus trusted Miletides. What do you think, he asked. Miletides answered, If we do not fight, the people of Athens will be frightened too, and will surrender the city to the enemy. All of Greece will follow. But if we attack before fear sweeps through our camp, I believe we will win. Callimachus said, Then let us fight. Were your predictions correct? Luck was with them. The Persian commander had sent his cavalry off again to make sure no other Greek armies were approaching. While the horsemen were away, the Greeks spread out in a wide line. The Greek generals purposely, or with deliberate planning, put more men at either end of their wide line, leaving the middle as the weakest part. Then, shouting a loud battle cry, the Greeks charged the Persians were startled. No one had ever ran toward them. Nevertheless, they moved forward toward the Greeks. Look how weak these fools have left their middle, laughed the Persian leader. But the laugh was on him. For just as the Greeks had planned, the Persians moved to the middle first and pushed back the Greek line. But then the stronger Greek forces on the edges circled around and attacked from the sides, catching the Persians between them. The Persians, confused and unable to defend themselves, turned and ran for their ships with the Greeks hot on their heels. In fact, the Greeks captured seven Persian ships before the Persians could even reach them. The other Persians sailed away. We have beaten the mighty Persians, the Greek told one another in amazement. Then he remembered their families waiting for news at home. Legend says that Phidippides proudly volunteered, I shall carry the news he set out again, leaving the scene of the battle at Marathon, and as he reached the gates of Athens, the people gathered round him. He was just able to gasp out one word, victory, that his great heart, which had carried him to Sparta and back, finally gave out. Phidippides fell dead at the gates of Athens. In tribute to Phidippides, the Greeks measured the distance he had run from Marathon to Athens. Remember, it's 26 miles, and those 26 miles became the distance of their long-distant races. A tribute is a gift or compliment that is given to honor or remember a contribution of a particular person or group. Why did the Greeks want to pay tribute to Phidippides? And this is why today we call a long-distance race a marathon, 
in memory of Pheidippides and all those who fought for freedom on the plains of Marathon. Today the word marathon can mean a 26-mile race or any long-distance race or endurance contest. 